Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Today we're going to explore an individual's free will to choose what they want and the importance of making the right choice. I'll start off by asking Nyla a series of simple questions. Let's jump right in. Okay. Let's see this one. <laughs> so first, tell me which one is the healthier foods to eat. I would say... The salad? Which would you rather eat? Would you rather eat a salad or would you rather eat this? Okay, go ahead, take a bite. How is it? It's good. So although Nyla knew that the salad was healthier, she still decided to go with the comfort food. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Nyla? Which one is healthier to drink? The apple juice or the cream soda? The apple juice. The apple juice is healthier. Which one would you like to drink? Go ahead, pick one. The cream soda? All right, taste it. This is the best one. That's the best? If we look at this like sin, we can see that Nyla was tempted to make another decision that was not good for her. I want you to think about which one is better for you. Going out for a run and exercising or playing computer games all day? Running. Exercising. Play computer games all day. Running all day. Running and exercising? Yep, it's better to get outside, condition your mind and body, that's the healthier thing to do. So far, these questions are really easy, right? It's clear what the obvious choices are in order to be healthy. But how do we know what is good for us versus what we should stay away from? And if we know what's bad for us, why do we still choose to take part in it? We all agree that it's wrong to kill and it's wrong to steal. We also agree that helping an elderly person cross the street is good and a kind thing to do. These are widespread morals. Everyone, no matter where they are from, would have the same opinion. The laws that govern our behavior are, of course, the Ten Commandments. We ought to choose good over evil based on these standard guidelines. Again. All of this is super simple and easy to understand. The Bible says in Revelation 14 verse 12 that there is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. In Romans 7 verse 19, Paul writes, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Like Paul, I think this is the struggle we all have. We are constantly faced with tough decisions to make, temptations to avoid, choosing victory over sin. We want to do what's best for us, but sometimes we get it wrong. We must have the endurance to see ourselves through though. Even if we take a bad turn, we should press forward and strive again. Okay. So what happens when life's decisions get a little harder? Are you ready for a tougher question? All right, let's see. Here we have two things for you to drink. Can you please choose the healthier one? Let me say that if you choose the wrong one, it can make you really sick. In fact, Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, there is a way that seems right to men, but its end is the way to death. Go ahead, pick which one. Looks like Nala is weighing out her options being she knows that the consequences are more severe if she chooses the wrong thing. Do you know that Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 
says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Mama, can you help me to choose? Mm, great question. Because Nala knows that her life depends on this decision, she doesn't want to make the decision by herself. She's requesting help. God reminds us, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. This comes from Jeremiah 29 verse 13. One cup is water, the other cup is vinegar. You cannot drink the one that's vinegar because it'll make you sick. Are you sure you got the right one? Did you follow my instructions? Which one smells funny? That one smells good. That one smells good? And you smelled the other one? Okay, drink the one that smells okay. It smells like water. When Nala decides to ask for help so that she doesn't drink from the cup that can cause her death, she's given instruction on how to choose what's best for her. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. I'm really glad you decided to seek help. That's what God would want for us. He wants us to ask for his help every day. Let's do one final demonstration that will illustrate what happens when we can't see where God is telling us to go or what to do. We just need to trust and have faith in him. Okay, so we have one bowl and I want you to squeeze and pour all of this stuff in. We have ketchup and what's this? Chili sauce, hot sauce. Okay, so Nyla, which one do you want to eat? This bowl that's on the left or this bowl that's on your right? On the right. You want to eat the fruit, right? Okay. But let me blindfold you. Can you see anything? No. No? So you wanted the blue bowl that was on the right, yeah? I'm just going to switch them around. Do you still want to pick the bow that's on the right? Yes. Okay. Do you trust me to make the decision for you? Yes. You can still choose whichever bow you want, but I know the plans I have for you, thus saith the Lord. Do you trust me to give you what your heart desires, or will you act according to your own will? Please trust me. Ever since Nyla has decided to ask God for help, she has also decided to fully trust him. She has decided to surrender her life to God, and all of those bad decisions that she made before, they don't even count anymore. Because Jesus washes away our sins. What started out as basic food choices quickly became matters of life or death, <sighs> salvation or condemnation. This is why it's important, even at a young age, to practice yielding or surrendering yourself to God's will. The more we do it, the better we'd become at it. You can eat this fruit, Nyla. <laughs> James 4 verse 7 says, Submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We just have to trust and obey God. He wants the best for us. Happy Sabbath.